I took the G-Dome Mobile Pro out on the river this weekend to test how well it works with my iPhone 13 for taking underwater shots and for taking over and under shots. Over and under shots are photographs or videos that include both above the water and below the water at the same time. If you wanted to capture over and under shots, typically you would stick the camera lens halfway above and below the water. But when you're using mobile phones where the lenses are like three quarters of an inch, it's very difficult to keep it at that level. Domes help because they push the water away from the camera lens and now you have a six inch surface to line up instead of a three quarters of an inch surface. Let's talk about the things that I liked. So first off, it feels well built. I think this is a, some sort of ABS plastic and it doesn't feel cheap. It feels like it's very strong. It feels good in your hand. I think the ergonomics are well done. You feel like you have a good grip here, almost like a camera body. Um, over here, you've got a nice handle that you can hold. Um, it helps that you can hold it like this vertically if you wanted to take vertical photos and then you could operate the photo button below this way um, or you could hold it landscape like this and you can hold it here. Um, sometimes I even sort of held it, if I was putting the dome sort of more underwater, I could grab it by the top and, it, and I felt like I had a good uh, secure hold on it. The sensitivity of the membrane on the back is very good. It's easy to just touch it, turn on the camera and I can easily swipe through different items. I even was able to use the buttons underwater. Now, I wasn't completely underwater. I was getting half and half shots. So, you know, the device would be halfway in the water, but I would still be able to operate the, the membrane. There is a gap in between the membrane and the phone, which is why I think it works underwater because instead of the whole membrane touching the capacitive surface of the phone, nothing is touching it until you actually push your finger on it. So it works very well. The membrane is very thin. I do worry about how well it will last, but they say it's super strong. I can stick my finger pretty deep in this slot over here and I can turn the phone off. They do talk about sort of pulling it to get air into it. So far, it's held up really well. Another thing that I really like about this is that every piece is replaceable. So, you know, if you puncture this membrane, you can order a new one. You can order new thumb screws and you can order uh, new covers. You can order new domes if it gets way too scratched and you can't buff it out. You can order new um, handles. There's other accessories like a light holder or a GoPro mount that you could stick on here. Another cool thing is that they actually offer several of these items as 3D printable plans that you can download. If you have a 3D printer and you want to print another one of these handles, you can print it for free. One thing that I did see was that they had a lens hood that you could print out that I didn't see them selling. That's kind of cool that they offer that. The other nice thing about it, it floats in the water. You know, one of the things that I worry about is when I'm shooting with the phone and I don't have it tethered, is that if I drop it, it's gonna sink into the river. But if you're shooting with the G-Dome, it floats. So if you drop it, it'll just keep floating and you'll be able to grab it. The G-Dome uh, Mobile Pro is not that expensive compared to a lot of camera housings. It is only $150. I checked on their website and they were offering a sale that you could get um, some other accessories and you could get it still at that price. The dome size is six inches. The whole device can go down waterproof to 15 meters. Let me know in the comments below if you are planning on using a dome housing for your phone and where you plan to use it. If you wanna check out the actual product site of the G-Dome Mobile Pro, I'll leave a link in the description. One of the great things about the G-Dome series is that it fits most cell phones. The G-Dome Mobile Pro has a bigger port opening here to accommodate bigger phones like the iPhone 13 and other phones that may have bigger camera port. If you have other kinds of phones in your family or that you own, the way this works is that you have a foam insert that you cut out to the shape of the phone. So you can order different foam inserts and when you buy this, it comes with two and you can cut out the shape of the phone and you can use it with that. So if your family has several different phones, you can just bring the foam inserts for each phone and everybody can use it, which is cool. Or if you upgrade your phone from a, you know, maybe you start out with an iPhone 5 or something like that that's small, and then you go up to an iPhone 13 Pro Max, which is really big. 
the dome will be able to work with all those different models. Uh, let's talk about some tips for using this. Pre-focusing or focus locking is really key to getting in-focus shots. Anticipating where the subject is and focusing on that point before you stick it underwater is key. I found that when I would just let the camera try and figure it out, it would not be able to focus once I stuck it underwater. Another key is if you are taking uh, action shots, say of a fisherman fishing, using the burst mode really helps if you're taking photographs. You can operate burst mode on the iPhone. Uh, the burst mode is um, activated by either sliding, let's see, sliding and holding the shutter button up like that, or by holding down the up volume, um, which in this version, I have not cut out a hole for the volume up button, but I do plan on doing that. So they, there are Bluetooth triggers, which I'd love to try, which you can then um, attach inside the case, and then you have an actual physical button to push. If the Bluetooth remotes activate burst mode, then I will definitely get one because that is much easier to do than trying to slide the button up or trying to stick my finger in and get the volume up button going. I tested the video with both the wide angle, the standard lens, and the telephoto lens, um, and it all worked very well. I think the wide angle tends to look the best, um, and especially if you're trying to get that split shot, but both, but all the modes worked in the dome. Another feature that is really helpful if you are just taking a picture, let's say somebody's casting or fishing or something like that, and you're not trying to catch an actual fish that is being caught, one tip is to use the timer mode because that activates 10 shots on the iPhone. So I definitely turned on the three second timer and then would just hit the button and then stick it underwater and sort of aim it and it would take 10 shots. And then I'd pull it out and I'd take it, I'd start it again and then I'd sort of situate it three seconds gave me enough time to compose my shot, but I'd still had a short burst that could capture a series of moments. Another tip that I would suggest is before you go use it, go watch the instructional videos on the GDOM site. There definitely was some things that I had some questions on when I was out on the river. And when I went to look at the instructions that they had, a lot of those questions would have been answered if I had watched those videos first. Another thing that I was thinking of that you could do, there's definitely enough room for my iPhone at least, that I could stick a small battery charger. I don't know if you've seen them, the ones that are about the size of a stick of gum, but I could definitely see cutting a little port or a little slot for the cable to run along and then a little channel and sticking that uh, battery charger. If you like this video so far, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps the channel out and it helps more people get to see this video. I definitely had some challenges uh, when I was using this. One of the biggest challenges was that my iPhone is white. And so when I was shooting into the sun, the sun would reflect off the white face of the iPhone and would show up on the dome and it would show up in the pictures. So I had to make sure that I was shooting with the sun to my back. There were even cases where I was in the shade, but because I was shooting up towards the bright sky, that was enough light that it would reflect off it and it would uh, show up in the shot, which ruined um, quite a few shots that I had because I wasn't keeping that in mind. One thing I did find was that I tried, I took a large polarizing filter and I stuck it uh, over the port and tried shooting through that. And that definitely cut the glare off. The polarizing filter that I had did not work very well with my phone and my phone had trouble focusing it. But I was thinking that if I were to get the Polar Pro case that comes with the large circular polarizer on it, and then I cut out the foam insert so that it fit that case with the polarizer, that might be a good solution on avoiding um, reflections. So I will report back if I get that case. In the meantime, I will just have to make sure I'm shooting with the sun to my back. One thing that I found that happens was if you hold the dome upside down like this, my phone is heavy enough that it falls out of the foam case. I can just, um, I don't wanna scratch this here, I can just 
push this over and push it back in and it's good to go. They do include some Velcro that you can stick onto your phone case and that you can stick onto the G-Dome that will Velcro it here and keep it from falling out. Which if you, maybe if you were actually snorkeling with it or diving with it, you may encounter it falling out more often. On the river, it only really happened when I was putting things away and sort of lifting it up and I was done shooting. So it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm not really a fan of having a piece of Velcro on my phone case, but maybe I'll sacrifice this cheap silicon case and just put it on there and uh, see how that goes. If you've been shooting and this has a lot of water on it, the dome, and you go and put this back on, the water inside stops the cover from getting a good seal. And I actually didn't realize that at first when I went to stick it on, I thought, oh yeah, it's on. And then I went to go put it away and the cover had fallen off into the river. And unfortunately my friend was there to see that and he pointed that out and I grabbed it. But that's something to be aware of is that you will want to make sure like if it's wet, hold it up and let some of the water come off and then put it on and make sure that you get a really good seal and you can even just sort of move it around a little bit like this to see if it's gonna fall off or not. Another downside to this are these hinges. And I found that if I was holding on tight so that my, like the fleshy part of my hand was here, and then I went to go open this up, it would pinch my hand really bad. Um, so be careful with that. When you do it, you know, hold your hand out like this when you do it, or even just open it up with two hands like that. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and please consider liking and subscribing. Take care.